Davi, today we're talking about my favorite subject in the world, one that I absolutely cannot help myself by uh, getting involved in the fight, which is day trading. Uh, you know, I've got my own thoughts about it. Obviously, we want to talk about the difference between day trading and investing, because I think a lot of new investors coming into the stock market are often, you know, prompted by these incredible pieces of software, incredible pieces of uh, technology, robots that can trade automatically for them. And uh, of course, it's an early entry point into the stock market. Day trading is very popular because it appeals to the gambling mentality in everybody. Uh, what are your thoughts on day trading? Oh, so look, like I told you the other day, uh, you and I are both in surfing. So I use this analogy when I talk to when I talk to people about day trading and investing. I see day trading as surfing, and I see um, sailing as investing. Even though I don't sail at all, and I love surfing, I don't participate in day trading. But the difference with surfing and day trading is surfing is quick. You're trying to get on a, on a wave. Most of the times, you get fucked up by the wave, and only like one or two, or three or four times. You actually catch a good wave if the conditions is nice and if no one drops in on you, right? Like a Brazilian surfer. But <laughs> sailing, of course, is a lot of planning involved. Um, you have to look at the long term when you plan on sailing. You have to look at where you're going, and then you have to also go through different conditions. You know, different weather conditions, and that's the same with investing. You have to look at it at a long at a long term, and then, of course, you have to be prepared to face different market conditions. I think that's such a perfect analogy. And I mean, even to the point where, you know, if you consider that 79% of people entering into day trading are going to lose all of their money. That's a statistic, right? Yeah, um, that's scary. It is absolute scary. More than that uh, is, and this appeals to the gambling nature, 64% of those who lose all their money will return for a second time to lose it all again. So, you know, that just proves the gambling mindset. But I think your analogy of surfing to sailing is so perfect. I mean, even from the perspective that there is a percentage of people who will catch every wave and be very successful, right? Um, the reality of it is for most people, that is not going to happen. Most people are going to get fucked up. So most people I don't know, I actually only know of one person that is successful in day trading. But then again, this guy inherited all his, all his money, you know? So he sits there, he's very conservative with his money. He's also kind of a, a, a different... It, it's a different headspace because he's not dependent mm. on that money. So I think mm. that also eliminates a lot of the stupid decisions he does. But apart from that, this is what the guy does full time, you know? So that is also something people need to keep in mind of is doing this or doing day, day trading means you constantly have to look at the stock prices. You have to constantly check your phone and you're constantly in a stressed mode. So in my mind, I, I, I don't know why you want to go, why you want to put yourself through that if the statistics shows that most people fail at it. So, you know, the analogy I always use when describing day trading, I always say to people, it's a lot like horse trading, right? You buy a horse today, you sell the horse tomorrow. And then guess what? To get back in and make profit again, you've got to buy another fucking horse and sell the horse all over again. To me, that sounds a lot like a fucking other job. And, then and the I don't want another job. The one gets cancer and dies on you. <laughs> and then every once in a while, uh, you might have a successful sale, but for the most part, yeah, they're going to get cancer. They're going to get lame legs. Something's going to happen, right? <laughs> and so I always say, to me, the objective of investing in terms of the journey that we're all trying to be on, which is to accomplish a point of financial freedom, is to get to a point where your money's working for you and you're not working for your money. Now, the problem with day trading that I fundamentally have, and look, people argue the fact that you can set your auto buy-in limit, your, 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 your entry points, you can set your exit points, you can automate most of it. But it doesn't, to me, doesn't make sense that you've got to literally, you've got to, you've got to execute every trade. You've got to be on top of everything. That's another full-time job. When I see these day traders sitting with 20 fucking monitors around them, I just go, man, my life is a lot easier because I pick a great company and I hold on for the long term. And that to me truly is the most passive form of investing. And for me, investing should be passive because if you're going to be successful in the markets, and, and this comes back to a point that you made earlier, which I think is so fucking critical but overlooked, is that if you come to the market and you have to make money, you, you start making desperate decisions. And so whether you decide to do that on day trading or even if you decide I'm going to be a long-term investor, but every three months you're trading out of your stocks or every two months, you're as bad as a day trader in my opinion. And so for me, I look at money as a slave and I want to employ those slaves to do the work for me. And certainly being a day trader is, is, is the opposite thing in my book. 
Yeah, listen, when you talk to a gambler, they will always tell you about the money that they won. They never tell you about the money that they lose. Because most of the time, what I figured out now, Justin, is not because they don't want to. Most of the time, they actually don't know how much they lose. Yep. They, they, they're they under a false impression that they're actually still making money. And I must tell you, dude, those, those trading platforms are clever. Mm. I've seen someone that participated in, in day trading and they don't get a call, but whenever they've got like a winning, a, a winning trade, all of a sudden they get a call from the, from the trading platform. Hey man, you're doing great. Why don't you put more money into the platform? I mean, you can double it if you keep going like this, you know, just boost the ego a little bit. And unfortunately it's, 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 it's human psychology. It's, it's their way of selling and they're tapping right into the motions of, of, of people. And I think that's, that's also where a lot of people get themselves caught. Well, I actually think I actually think these applications that promote day trading and these influencers that promote day trading, I think it's a predatory um, activity. I really do believe they are preying on the the weak and the vulnerable. Um, you just you just have to look at the environment under which they promote. And listen, we get we get offers all the time to promote some bullshit platform, uh, to promote some bullshit uh, day trading, uh, you know, course or whatever. I mean, we, we get hundreds of these. The biggest thing I discovered in the last couple of years is that actually a lot of the platforms never actually physically deploy the cash into the market, right? So what happens, you come and you, you deposit, let's say, $1,000. Uh, that $1,000 never actually physically makes it to the market. It actually exists on the platform. And you literally are betting on paper before it's even gone to the market. And so this is why a lot of these platforms to affiliates like ourselves will say to us, listen, if a person deposits $1,000, we'll give you that $1,000 up front uh, as a commission because they know how many times people are going to come and lose money. And of course, the margin is 100% for them because they never... They never actually deploy their capital into the market. They never physically buy the underlying asset. Yeah, um, those guys are making an absolute fortune. So it's it's a it's a predatory environment. And look, I mean, we have got people who are very successful day trading. I have a lot of friends who do commodities trading. They are exceptionally successful with it. Um, like I was saying in in some of the previous content, I think where you are understanding push and pull economics, you're understanding demand supply cycles. Uh, such as in commodities, I think you have a far more reasonable chance of success than, for example, day trading Forex or day trading crypto or day trading meme stocks. But honestly, I I just don't like the concept of day trading because I'm a fucking lazy investor. I'm the laziest investor that's ever existed. I want to buy a good company. I want to invest into it at what I think is a reasonable price. And if the price goes down, I take more buying opportunities. And if the price goes up within a six or a seven month period, I completely ignore it because it's a vanity. It's a vanity figure. It's a lot like I tell people in business. Turnover is vanity. Profit is sanity. And the only time you make profit when you're actually in a stock is when you sell it. Whatever the numbers are on the screen is fucking meaningless if, you, if you're still holding it. So, you know, I just I'm a very fucking lazy investor. I'll be honest. I'm the laziest investor I've ever met. I don't want to work for my money. Now, look, have you ever spoken to a day trader and notice how they how they behave? <laughs> Fuck, it's impossible having a conversation with them. They're always sitting there watching the phones, like someone's got to phone me now. I, yeah. I need to be somewhere. You can't. It's just it's like a person while looking at Facebook while speaking to them. It's it's impossible to have a conversation with them, yeah. and it's, it's it's kind of sad if you think about it. You know, I mean, you only live once. Time is the only thing you can't buy back, and now you're spending spending it on dumb shit like this. You know, um, I think. I think, Davi, the biggest problem is people come to this market to try and make money. And you've pointed this out before, uh, which people probably think, what the fuck are we talking about? But, you know, maybe you can elaborate on that a bit. Meaning? You know, like people coming to the market to make money. To make money. And and that's their first goal. And I think that's the mistake. Yeah, look, I mean, that's that that is stupid. You you need to stay away because you make you make emotional decisions i think the first thing you need to know before the first thing you need to do before you even start buying any kind of stock out there and that's what i love about real real estate investing if you go and make a real estate investment mm -hmm. you don't expect to take your or sell your real estate within 5 to 10 years now why yeah. the fuck do you buy into a company and you expect to sell it tomorrow again you know it's a completely different mindset and i think once you start or, or once you figure out how your emotions work and keep your emotions on, in check, I think mm -hmm. then you can go to investing. I think that's the first thing you should most probably do when you want to invest. But the thing is, you come out of the market, you lose some money, and you think, oh shit, I got to make this money back tomorrow. Mm. Then you start making dumb, irrational decisions and you, it's just a spiral. And next thing you see is you've got nothing left. 
or, or there's one worse than that. People who like made a little bit of money during the pandemic on on some hit and luck, uh, hit and miss stocks. Now all of a sudden they fucking experts. I always say, show show me a multi decade history in investing, and then I'll call you an expert. Um, if you've been able to successfully be in the markets for for more than a decade, chances are you've lived through a cycle or two. And the problem is a lot of people got very lucky during the pandemic. A lot of people, there was a crazy amount of money flowing into the stock market. They they literally jacked the, the momentum uh, stocks that were working. They made a lot of money out of it. And all of a sudden, they're fucking absolute heroes until, and I always say this, it's like it's a lot like boxing. You can shadow box all day long until you get punched in the fucking face. Then all, all of a sudden, you'll see who the real boxers are. And this is what's happening in the market right now. Those investors of 2022 and 2021, they're getting fucking punched in the face right now and it's hurting. Well, most of them are out of, are out of the stock market. That's where you can see most of the stock or most of these stock investors, day traders' views have gone down. <laughs> and, and you know, Davi, this, I think this leads into something that you and I talk a lot about is, you know, don't come to, don't come to the stock market to make money. I know that, and, and I know this is a foreign concept to people. You know, what the fuck are we investing in the stock market for? What I mean by this is you get a lot of people who've got, you know, a very limited amount of capital and they want to scale that up as quickly as possible. And so they're looking for those investments that are going to 10x, 20x. Um, you and I come to the market with a different concept. Like we fucking risk everything to make our money in our own businesses. By the time we put it in the stock market, why the fuck am I going to risk my hard earned capital on, on a gamble, right? Because every day for me is a gamble. So I want to put my money into something that has a degree of predictability to beat inflation. So first and foremost, it's about capital preservation. Yeah, like I always tell my son, my kids, one day you will understand. Unfortunately, you'll have to go through that pain if you're not listening to me. If you fucking touch that stove, you're going to burn. But go try it out for yourself. You're most probably going to get fucked. So <laughs> unfortunately, that's, what, that, that's the same with people trying to day trade. Yeah, and you know, I mean, like I say, there are people who are successful with it. I'm not knocking day trading completely. I'm just saying specifically for me, and I think you've got the same mm. kind of mindset because of, and I think this is the entrepreneurial journey as well. I think a lot of people who go into day trading are not necessarily entrepreneurially minded. These are people who believe that if you can read a graph, if you can read the candles, if you can find the patterns, you can make money. But what people don't realize on the other end of that candle, on the other end of that signal is real life, a real world that influences that thing on the screen. And if it was that fucking predictable, then these robots would just trade for everybody. Nobody would ever need to actually physically sit behind a screen and uh, people would be making a fucking fortune, never have to go to work. But let's be honest, you know, when you see the guy sitting with a couple of thousand dollars on his laptop keyboard, uh, which, by the way, I find to be an oxymoron to begin with. We live in a digital world. I don't know why the fuck they're showing paper money. But when you see that kind of thing, um, you you realize how far gone people are in terms of what they're wanting. And I think it's so important to come back to the basics. Yeah, look, I think to close this off, and I've said this in a few videos, videos before, I mean, you've got hedge funds deploying billions, billions mm -hmm. every single year into creating these platforms and algorithms, you know, and that's something they actually don't even sell. Uh, they keep it for themselves. Yeah. But the thing is, those things trade, trade, trade in milliseconds. You as an investor are just not going to be able to compete on that level, you know? So look, if you're really optimistic, go for it. But um, oh, I, I suppose it, it's something you have to experience for yourself if you don't want to listen. When you're done losing money and you'd like to really learn about stock market investing, you want to learn how to buy investments that passively work for you over time, a set it and forget it approach. Do the research, focus on the strong points and the weak points of a company. Know the business you're investing into. When you get to that point, come back to our channel. Until then, you probably want to scroll past here and go and go and watch all the crazy shit of Oaks buying Lambos because that's not the reality of the world.